So I've got one of these low-cost fog machines that is not working in any way except that the light comes on. And it's actually been sitting around for a few years and uh, I thought I'd finally have a look at it. I've already got screws out. And it appears fairly simple. I've got the fluid pump down here. Looks like it would be a, a linear, sort of a diaphragm sort of a thing, probably. A nice copper line. And then the uh, heated area. And it leads to the heater there and there. A thermostat there that will open up. It will disconnect the power when the uh, temperature is reached. And uh, this does not allow the pump to run. So what happens when you press the switch here? It won't allow the pump to run until this temperature is reached. So I believe the way it's wired here is that the pump receives the uh, live, or the hot lead, from the switch here. And it gets the neutral side through the heating element. So it's connected right here and when this thermostat is closed while it's heating we've got live side over here and so when it opens then the pump can get its neutral through the heating element over to the, the other side here that is connected then to the neutrals in this connector. So I've already had it on for a little while and then when you open up and feel here it, it seems that nothing is heating. So we'll do some testing on the heating element here. So I've just disconnected one lead here to isolate this reading to the heating element. And I've got one side of my meter clipped on there and I touch the other side, I get around 20 ohms, which comes to uh, 720 watts, which is right what it should be. This thing is supposed to be 700 watts. So, something else is up. Okay, I measured the voltage just across the live and neutral over here, well, on, and it only reads about 89 volts. Uh, so we got to poking around, and it appears we have a bad neutral connection for from the neutral at this end of the machine to the neutral on the plug. You have about nine mega ohms of resistance here. That's no good. So let's go right to it and disconnect this crappy crimp connector on all the neutrals here. Huh. It doesn't appear to be so crappy in this case. The metal bit's still on there. Check our resistance at that point. Okay, checking between the plug and right where the wire comes into the housing and connects to everything else. Looks like we're pretty good. So it looks like our ridiculous resistance, that's on the mega ohm scale again, is right in the single lead. Which goes across down here. And that uh, clamped area there. So my guess is that the way they run the, the neutral tightly clamped through this metal bit here is a safety measure so that if the thermostat should fail to work and this thing overheats 
that it would go to ground and blow the fuse back here. It doesn't appear to have worked that way though. But perhaps it did the job anyway. It's no longer drawing power. But I'm going to use a test lead here to replace that bad neutral and just observe it here and see if the thermostat is working and see if, see if otherwise this thing works and then I'll look at how to fix it. Okay, test lead in place. I have now decided to run the hot side here through the ammeter and when I turn it on it now draws 5.7 amps there. So there's definitely something happening now. Alright, I got the ammeter rigged in there in a more permanent temporary way. And let's just turn it on here and, and observe for a while. Let it heat up and see what we get. Alright, after a couple of minutes the heater is definitely getting hot. And if I disconnect the power into this as though, like I said, the thermostat had opened. The pump now works, or at least is responsive. Alright, I poured a little water in there to bring that up. Heater's not even on at the moment, but there you go. Looks like there's hope. You know, it looks like this thermostat is very loose in its assembly here for it to be getting an accurate uh, reading. No conductivity there. Thermal conductivity. I just unscrewed the thermostat from its plate here and bent this plate with the pliers in a, in a curved sort of fashion with the screw holes bending down away from the thermostat here so that when I screwed it back together it would apply pressure to the thermostat again for thermal conductivity. And I'll just turn it on and see if this thermostat will open. Okay, the thermostat just clicked. Heat light goes out. We have a voltage on this side and on the other side, no voltage. Of course, between that and neutral. It's working as it should. And nothing's on fire. And it fogs. Probably need to clean this thing out. The 700 watt fogger is not the best in the first place. I must say, I put this aside because I got better ones. And if you're going to spend your money on a fog machine, you say get one of the bigger ones. It's far, far better. The 1200 watt ones I've got are much, much farther better than this 700 watt than the wattage alone would indicate. They put out ridiculous amounts of fog. So it looks like it's time to run some vinegar through this thing. I don't believe I've ever done that. And uh, fog is coming out so slowly here that uh, when you're holding the pump button down, it's putting the heater back into the circuit. As I said, it was getting its neutral through the heater. And uh, it's keeping right up. The thermostat never turns the thing back on, as it would normally do when you ran a burst of fog. 
So I just put a little distilled white in the tank with what was already there and uh, ran it a bit more and the thermostat finally kicked the heater back on full time. So we're going to pause and let that heat up again as that disables the pump. This thing is just not pumping after quite a bit of attempted pumping. I'm actually getting less output all the time. So I pulled the reservoir off, which just pulls off. It wasn't even fastened down in any way. And I'm going to disconnect this pump here and test the pump and the line separately and see if I can blow through the line with the compressor. Okay, well, I've been fiddling with this pump that comes apart like so. It's actually surprisingly clean inside. None of the seals are really bad. And there's a check valve inside this little piece. And I've made sure that that is functioning freely. This is the, the valve part here. This spring here holds, holds that shut so that uh, liquid can only flow in one direction. And it'll draw it in from back here on uh, the return stroke and then propel it out this way and I've had it on here and uh, let's see like so and it's quite powerful actually this gets painful after a while so it, it clearly operates properly in that way got a good seal there I've hit every little piece out of here. There's another little check valve inside of here. And it all works until I screw it all the way together. So there's that. Oscillating merrily. As you can see when I screw it all the way down, it limits the movement severely and you can barely feel it vibrating and it's not pumping. So, I'm thinking maybe I will just stick an extra O-ring in here somewhere so that it can be tight without screwing down quite all the way. So I've clearly got everything here for this thing to work. I don't want to buy a new pump. So I bring forth the assortments. You cannot have too many assortments. Really, even even with all this, I do not have the appropriate O-rings to thoroughly rebuild this thing. Let's see if there's something that can take up a little space and make this work again. I've added one O-ring right in there. And when I assemble it, it doesn't screw down quite all the way. Without ridiculous force, of course. And it is oscillating merrily. I think I'll reassemble this and see if it works. Okay, now complete with jumper wire. Ah, uh -huh. the thing on the back of there where the wire went through was a thermal fuse. Makes sense. All right, it's done heating. Let's see what we got. Certainly better than before. Not sure if that's maximum output. A little tweaking.
Well, that's adequate. The show shall go on. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that business and uh, comment. And you can ask questions there too, you know. Even though it says comment. Don't be afraid.